Hello and welcome back to the Digital Marketing Podcast. My name is Kieran Rogers. I'm Louise Crossley. And I'm Daniel Rolls. And today we are discussing Google Gemini versus Chat GPT. Right, there's been a lot going on. I have been speaking at conferences and it got a slightly ridiculous point. I think I was speaking at like six conferences over a two-week period. And I had to redo my presentation, I think, six times during that period because every day something new would be announced about AI. And I was talking about AI, which was good that it was really up to date, but it was a bit of a pain from that point of view. The thing is, if you don't get it right, all anybody remembers during the whole presentation is, oh, yeah, but have that, you heard about that new thing? Yeah, and it was, oh, that was out of date. Oh, tell him about that. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Well, we, so. we record chat GPT updates quite often. And as soon as they're out, we've missed something. Yeah, because this, something this is the out. problem. So there, there was a big announcement from ChatGPT, which we'll go through in a moment, but then Google have announced Gemini. So I'll, I'll talk you through Gemini in just a second as well. But before we do that, mm-hmm. um, if you're listening to this uh, as it's just come out, next week we have uh, a ChatGPT hands-on masterclass. We've got a GA4 advanced masterclass, and we've got those going on on a, on a kind of continuous cycle. No, half-day masterclasses, um, 100 pounds, try and make it accessible for everyone. Loads of people coming on those. So uh, if you go to targetinternet.com forward slash masterclass, you will find all the details for those. And as we sit here at the moment, there are a couple of spaces next, next week left as well. So, if, um, if, you, if you want to be the smartest marketer in the room, it's a quick route to it. <laughs> the, the reality <laughs> is that I think um, going into 2024 with some skills and this stuff is going to be helpful. So let's move on. Right, let's, let's get into it. First of all, let's do the, the chat GPT update. So a couple of key things you well it was first of all that it was only it only knew stuff until april 2021 so it was a couple of years out of date in the training it's now updated to april 2023 so it knows a load of more up-to-date stuff they have integrated in the text and the the image stuff the dali stuff so it used to be you could get it to write some social prompts you could get it to write a prompt for you for creating image but you had to do that separately now you can go and say Look at this article online, write me three LinkedIn posts and generate an image for each one all in one thing and it'll output the whole lot for you um, as well. What's interesting with the image creation, if you ask it for some variations, it will do four variations for you, but it will do a slightly different prompt for each one and you can see which prompt and then go off and use that and refine that a little bit. So suddenly, much more easy to use. Um, They've released some other things like text to speech and speech to text. Um, they've done some visual stuff so it can look at websites and so on and so forth. So there's, there's some quite interesting things going on. But what the big thing they announced was these custom GPTs. So a custom GPT allows you to build your own specialized kind of version of chat GPT. So you go in, you create it, give it a name, and then you go through and say, I want you to do this. So you're going to be my social media post writer. I will give you some links. You will then summarize those links into social media posts. You'll do two Instagram, one LinkedIn, whatever it might be generate an image, use emojis, and it will do all that stuff for you. The great thing is you can also upload your own files into it. So you could go and say, here's our tone of voice guideline. Here's all the details about our brand. But immediately there's a problem there. Any thoughts? The problem is you've just uploaded all your stuff and the AI is being trained on it. Mm. So if it's not publicly accessible stuff, you don't want to do it. They are releasing an enterprise version which basically means that you'll be able to upload loads of stuff and it'll be private. There's already some tools out there that are, are kind of doing that. How eye-wateringly expensive well, is the enterprise? I don't version? think that there's a big one. Like if you want to train your own AI on, say, your Lloyds of London and you've got the vast amounts of data, yeah, that's going to be expensive. Hmm. But actually, just to be able to <laughs> upload some stuff and firewall it, they're not talking huge amounts of money. There's actually um, some tools online that will do this already for about $99 a month. Hmm. So you can go in upload all of your blog posts and then what it's able to do is reference those blog posts when it's writing about other stuff for you as well so bear that privacy piece in mind uh, when you're going through and doing this the interesting thing is you can upload files but you can also connect it to other systems now so maybe you have got a um something that does weather forecasts you could plug it into that pull the weather forecast in and use that to summarize something for the day but equally if you've got a crm system or a web analytics system with an api on it you could plug it into that pull data in and do something with it the data analysis has also got a lot better. So I, I tested this out and I went through and we work with a few organizations um, 
something called UK Ecology and Hydrology. So it's basically a load of academics creating data sets. I spoke about this previously. And the idea is you take that data and you do some sort of use case with it, mostly with sustainability projects. The data is quite impenetrable for the average person. So all I did was download a data set, uploaded it as a zip file, mm. and said, analyze this data. It unzipped it. It said, these are the key files. This is what I think it's showing me. I think I'll clean the data up, do this, and then I'm going to run through this. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, go for it. And it went through and it analyzed and visualized the data, which is the kind of stuff we were teaching master's level students before. So it's really taken some, mm. some kind of leaps and bounds. So it's starting to do some really interesting things. And because you can now use the API to plug into this stuff, people are coming up with some interesting use cases. So it's a bit of a wild west though, isn't it? I mean, where does intellectual property come into this? Because, I mean, it's so easy to upload this stuff, but you, like, yeah. do we really know how it's being used, whether the systems... It will be training the AI on it. I mean, it definitely yeah. will be training the AI on it in terms of trying to work out what's useful, what's not. There is a thing in your settings to say, don't keep my stuff. Um, but what I would suggest, if, it, if it's not publicly exposed, I wouldn't be putting stuff into these large mm. language models at the moment until you're completely sure what they're mm. doing with the data, just to be on the safe side. My, my favorite, there was two use cases that I really liked. One was that they had to shown ChatGPT a website, that uploaded image of a website, and say, give me <coughs> conversion rate optimization tips. And it went through and looked at the website, analyzed it, and suggested how it could be improved. Mm. Someone else took it a stage further, used it to generate the code to do that, and then upload the code to the server bit of a test because it was breaking things and all sorts mm. but the point is you did you suddenly had a self-improving website mm. which is kind of crazy you can imagine plugging that into your analytics as well and saying based on what you see what the analytics is telling you improve the website and run automatic a b tests so that gets quite interesting we're not quite there yet um the other one was it, it got it went and watched a football match video of a football match and commentated on it but did it in the style of a football commentator. Did you get excited? It got really got, excited. It? And then when it screamed, goal, it screamed, goal. But it did it in this really weird voice and it just went, ah! it was really strange. So, but like suddenly like, mm. wow, okay. So I think in the next six months, you're just going to see a raft of tools coming out of people doing stuff with these things. Really great imitation. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying that's what the chat GPT well, can do. Now. That's it, right? I mean, what, what's interesting is that when they announced these things, all these new announcements, there were, the estimate was that 300 businesses overnight would have just gone down the pan because people have been building things on top of ChatGPT and actually now they're doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's, if you dig into all the, the rumors and the information about why the CEO was, was, sort of was sacked and then came back in mm -hmm. and all that kind of complexity, I want to get into it, but it was to do with this thing that someone was quite upset that their business overnight was just kaput and they hadn't been told about it. So... ChatGPT, go and take a look. Um, lots of really interesting things going on. Particularly, I think, for marketers, the DALI integration with the writing, just it will streamline loads of your workflows as well. Um, what was really interesting, though, is that we were looking at this and saying, why are Google so behind us? Like, Bard's all right, and it's less prone to hallucination, but it hasn't got all those other things built into well, it. And the it, fake facts it, it was giving Kieran. It, it, the, yeah, I mean, it did do a bit of that, didn't it? <laughs> here's the thing, though. They have been gradually improving it. Yep, improving, they have. Which makes it very hard to understand where it's at, unless you've, mm. let, let's say, last June, for example, if you tested Bard out yeah. back in May or April, um, you, you would have had, like, benchmarks and, yeah, no, it can't do this, this, and this. But you, literally, because of the pace of change with these things, you literally have to do that every three to four weeks to see what they've to released. To see what, yeah. what, what's released and updated. And that's one of the things I think I've noticed with Bard is that they don't do it all in one big chunk yep. like Chat GPT to date have. Um, you know, they're, they're releasing stuff almost weekly in some cases, definitely monthly. Yeah, if you look at the change log, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's literally coming out every, so I, every I, days. Last time I had a serious play around with it was end of September. September, and I was really surprised. Like it could come a long, long way since then. But there hadn't really been any huge announcements. Like unless you're following the announcements blog, you don't really see it. Like for me, the big fly in the ointment right now is Chat GPT. And I found this when you're teaching people this. Um, no one can register for a new account, and you haven't been able to for a couple of months now because they've just locked it down. Chat GPT, you know, open AI, you need to sort this out. Because actually, you know, Google, you're going to run a mock if you allow people to get access to Gemini. But guys, you need to wake up and smell the coffee. I know why you're doing it. I know you're doing it because you haven't necessarily got the computing power. But the longer you hold that back, 
the more early adopters of other systems there will be. And once I've learned to use one, that's it. You know, if it does what I need, you know, that's why Google are where they're at. No one else uses any other search engines because they've they they've nailed it. And OpenAI, just putting it out there. You you're on the you're on a written warning. You need to sort that out. I'll tell you what's really interesting. Let, let's let's talk about Gemini then. So they've announced Gemini. It's a brand new AI model they're using to power everything else. Mm. There's three different versions of it that will be rolled out in different places. So one is like an on-device version, and there's the big kind of main one. Um, it's a multimodal model. So let's explain what that means. ChatGPT is a large language model for text. DALI is an AI for images. They're two separate things. The interface is integrated them together, but they're two separate models. A multimodal model means that uh, text, <coughs> images, video, audio, and code are the base of this whole thing. So you could give it video and it can describe it. You could give it code and it could create things from it. You could give it an image and it could generate the code to build that website, et cetera, all in this kind of one model. So it's a real huge leap of advantage over a text only based model mm. because you'll be able to take that and apply it to a, a whole heck of different scenarios, like a load of different scenarios you better kind of apply that to. So that ability is really important, but, the benchmarking we were talking about a moment ago, Kieran, you're right, you need to do this on a regular basis. But what Google are very proud of is they're saying it is scoring higher than ChatGPT across the majority of measures. But let me give you a couple of examples because you need to dig into the detail on these things. Um, MMLU, which is Massive Multitask Language Understanding, it's basically saying, does it understand key subjects? Um, and it tests across 57 subjects. Uh, it got 90% versus ChatGPT's 86.4%. So it's better at that stuff. But your average expert human is about 89.8%. So it's it's pretty, pretty good at that stuff. But, and there's loads of other stats in that show how good it is. But what you didn't, they didn't really highlight this one. Common sense reasoning for everyday tasks, which you'd think pretty important, mm. it scored lower than ChatGPT, 88 <laughs> versus 93%. So it's it is good. It will no doubt improve. It's much more flexible. But the devil's always in the detail when you look at these things and what it's actually capable of doing. Like, you know, I'll tell you the things that are possible with ChatGPT, but until you're playing around with them, um, you don't really see. Now, one thing I would say with ChatGPT, getting it to write code for you, it's pretty good. Someone has created a, a custom GPT with loads more instructions and background and details, and it went from being 65% effective at writing code, so code that actually worked, to 88% effective. So these custom GPTs give you the ability to give extra instructions and guidelines and documentation. So it makes it better at doing those things um, as well. So I'd look at those abilities. Now, this is the, the controversial thing. Um, they released a video and we'll put this in the show notes, targetinternet.com forward slash podcast as ever. But the demo video shows all the different interactions with this new Gemini model and um, basically people uploading you know, video, showing it things, asking Gemini to respond to what's in the video and so on. It's not entirely real. So what they're actually doing is showing it static images and then asking it questions. But the video makes it look like it's this seamless interactive experience. It's kind of done for dramatic mm. effect um, a little bit as well. So Google got themselves into trouble. When they released Bard, the video that released Bard basically showed some incorrect facts and it rocked their share price because uh, they go, well, it's not as good as it's supposed to be. They're at a bit of a risk now. And this is why they've probably been so cautious because if you're a public listed company like Google and you release something and it's not quite right and people's expectations are really high, it's going to damage your share price. Mm. Now, I think Gemini is going to be incredible. I think they're really onto something. Here. Is it coming in to replace Bard or is it going to sit no, alongside So there's it? going to be, at the moment, Bard is powered by their existing model. Yeah. It's going to switch to be powered by Gemini. Right, okay. And in January of 2024 is the plan at the moment that you will have Bard Advanced. Right. Now, I asked Bard how much Bard Advanced was going to cost. And it says um, there is no pricing, but it will be the same as ChatGPT. <laughs> so basically, it said there's no pricing, but it's going to be £20 a right. month or whatever $20 a month equivalent is. Um, so it will it will be a paid for service. Um, but the reality is, as Kieran was saying, you can't get in many regions, you can't get a, a ChatGPT Pro at the moment because they're a bit overwhelmed. Um, if Google are able to offer this when you can't access that, they might get a bit of a lead again on these things as well. So it's quite interesting. Not, not just a bit of a lead, massive lead. Well, it's adoption, right? It's well, because you've already got 
nearly two months worth of pent up user frustration. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the more hype that goes on between October 2023 and when this comes out, like the bigger the problems going to be because you've just got that pent up like I want it I want it I can't get it I can't get it oh look shiny new thing over there and it's the same price well I'll do that yeah well you're going to access what you can access yeah. and you're already seeing it now you're running a training course people are using Bard because it's just openly accessible yeah whereas you know mm -hmm. ChatGPT isn't so therefore we'll see how it goes the, the reality is we're talking about these two at the moment I mean you do need a huge amount of computing power to run these things hence why they're both doing them um if you look at whose computing power is running on awful lot of websites. Amazon have got this as well. So I'm just wondering what might happen with that. I mean, it's quite likely that there's lots of open source models that might be sitting on Amazon web servers as well, but we'll start to see a bit more of this stuff. The other thing is this isn't the only thing that Google are doing. Um, for example, they've got a thing built into YouTube now that is looking at YouTube shorts and then describing what's going on in that short. So you know, there's that thing you've seen a meme and you think, oh, I need to find it, but you can't really search in a search engine for it. Mm. It's like, okay, it's that, that, that one with the dog riding a surfboard or whatever <laughs> it was. Um, but actually now within YouTube shorts, you are able to do that. They've also done a thing within YouTube where when you go in and upload your videos, you add chapters to those videos. Well, it's now automatically suggesting the chapters for you. I mean, you know, Luke, yeah. it's a huge time saver if you could potentially do that as well. So um, by the time you see this, so on December the 13th, uh, 2023, the API is being opened up for Gemini. And then you'll see that being rolled out over the coming months. So you're suddenly going to see lots of people testing and building things with this, which is a very, very exciting time for marketing. But it's also increasingly important that we are on top of this whole skills thing. And we are giving our team time to learn and to experiment and to try these things out. We have done a big study at Imperial College and they took uh, a couple of global organizations and they looked at everyone's job roles and they broke it down into tasks. So those tasks were, you know, you answering emails, going to meetings, doing all the things you do in your job. They did a load of modeling and the average kind of thing that came out is 40% of those tasks that you do every day will not exist anymore in, in two years. Mm. So what that basically means is that um, essentially what you're going to see is our job roles are completely changing. So if you've got very fixed job descriptions, if you've got very fixed plans for learning, all of that stuff is going to potentially be out of date. So we need to really be on the skills piece and really feed that into our organizations and give people time. When we talk about innovation, you know, Google had that 20% time, um, 3M had their 15% time, giving people time to look and experiment and try things out and to learn and to innovate um, becomes ever more important yeah. um, as well. Is there any news on Facebook's Llama? Yeah, I mean, it, it, we it, talked about that in the last. Yeah, episode. they are still talking about it. They're still <laughs> developing it. They're saying it's more accurate than Chat GPT, but it's not widely available yet. But they're going to start building it into their platforms. Um, and that, again, there was some talk about February uh, 24. You're going to start seeing a lot more stuff from that as well. So everyone's kind of working on these things. Because they released their custom AIs as well, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So, which was slightly. So you've got like a private chef and a. Yeah, and it was it was more of a character avatar yeah. based kind of thing as well. And people weren't that overwhelmed by it. But you can now build your own. So yeah, it's starting to get into the same kind of space as well. Looking at it, it's like they've made it available for download, but they've still got separate systems for chat and for generating code. Yeah. So this is a huge like step forward, what Google are proposing. Yeah, definitely. All being in one place from that point yeah. of view as well. What's also interesting is that they've got their um, AI lab tool for helping people to use these tools to bake them into the things mm. that they're doing. So all these different AI platforms they've got, they're opening up and making it quite easy to integrate those. And that's when it gets exciting because it's an enabling technology. It's something that enables you to do lots of other interesting things that was really tough to do before. So um, as we said, if you want to get upskilled on this stuff, we've got a masterclass coming up. So targetinternet.com forward slash masterclass. As ever, all the links are in the show notes, targetinternet.com forward slash podcast. Very interested to hear from people their use cases with this stuff. Mm. Are you doing it and finding it's not much good? Are you using it for writing and finding it useful? Are you doing something a bit more exciting and interesting with it? What parts of your day-to-day -day job are you kind of workflow automating and, and doing something interesting with as well? So let us know. Uh, and we look forward to speaking to you again on the Digital Marketing Podcast. Please subscribe for more videos like this and visit targetinternet.com for more free digital marketing resources.